You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Angelscapes with host Nancy Smith, your direct connection to finding your soul's power and wisdom. Join Nancy, Akashic Medium, in this interactive show to explore tools and steps you can take to create peace, calm, and confidence in your life. So now, please welcome the host of Angelscapes, Nancy Smith. Hello, this is Angelscapes, and I'm your host, Nancy Smith. And as you know, I'm here to share with you my own soul's journey, and I'd like to show you the path that you can take to access the power of your own soul. And it's time to plug into your soul's power, as we know today, and all the changes and the chaos, soul power is where you need to go. So let me teach you how to build a fulfilling partnership with your soul and discover a powerful being that you really, really are. So today... Um, I want to talk to you about some strategies that you could use to access your soul through your in- intuition. So we're right now, I don't know how many weeks, depending on where you are in the world, well into isolation around the world due, due to this coronavirus. So hopefully if you read this a month from now, it'll be beautiful history. But right today, it's not history. We're right in the middle of it. So I'm at four weeks. Some people I know are at six weeks. And then this is in the States. But then if you're over to other countries, I don't know. Seems like forever, right? So some of you are um, at home. And some of you are what um, people are calling the front lines. And I just want to thank the first responders in the medical field the nurses, the doctors, the caregivers in the hospitals, and those assisting um, elderly care in the different assisted living places. It's got to be a hard place to be. And all the um, nurses and doctors and the telemedics are services for their um, help for those of us who are at home and, not, and some of us aren't feeling well. And it's a lot of people calming calming a lot of people down and I really appreciate that and I wanted to thank also the food people who are preparing foods the grocery shop guys the cooks restaurants and the pharmaceutical industries keeping us all fed and cared for in so many more um, service industries that I can't even possibly think of the truckers um, the um, the people who stock the shelves all kinds of things so uh, that makes it possible for us to keep this curve down Um, so important and I've heard from many of you that um, seems to be a common observation of many of us that have a lack of focus are very worried kind of borderline depression uh, fatigue from isolation and I've heard it said many many times the world will return um but not when we return, we'll get it back. We'll, we'll, we'll go out, but it won't be the world that we left. It'll be a whole new world. And every time I read that on social media or on the news or some place, I'm so many different modalities are talking about this. I get a knot in my stomach, right? What a scary thought. So when we went home and they were told to lock down or whatever shelter in place, didn't we think we were going to kind of go back to world when everyone got better and now um that might not be the case so what is the case and how do we manage that so right now a lot of us have had long moments of introspection considering um, our life as it is considering our life as it was and wondering what's coming ahead i have seen and heard comments and criticisms on our way of life not being balanced not being good especially in the global network of things and i've heard many many amazing stories of since we're all home and not running our cars around and different things and certain industries are shut down that um you know the air is clearing the water's clearing 
and um, I also am hearing about families spending a lot of time with each other that they didn't have before, and there are good things coming from that. And I also hear from family members who um, are spending a lot of time together, and their lives are falling apart because now they're facing maybe a bad marriage that they've been ignoring, just trying to get it through day to day, but they had enough time to not be together, and now they have to look at it. So um, I've also been listening to stories in the news about how people feel our government is not effective. And then I've seen some behaviors with um, our own government, which questions um, to me, are they ineffective? Do they, they changing the story all the time? What's the leadership? What's really going on? And um, it's been very difficult to sometimes get information that's accurate and concise and I know where, where we. I know where I stand. We know where we stand, and I've heard a lot of people lose faith in some of the things that were being asked to do, as if it was somebody making up a really bad story and making us all do a ridiculous, ridiculous thing like stay home. So uh, we've been told that our economy and our healthcare system um, needs help, and it's not doing its job. These are all very. Um, very disturbing and frustrating things which lead, I feel, to a certain level of anxiety. I've, you know, I've heard people say the virus is a hoax, that which just blows my mind, until they get sick. And this is um, something that maybe they didn't consider. And here they are getting sick. They're ending up in the hospital in a bed in a hallway with a bunch of other very sick people and not enough medical providers to help. And then they get online and they say, this is real. So I've seen that too. I'm sure you all have seen all of these stories I'm just mentioning. So I had a thought to share with you. As we sit in our introspective times, those of us who are not in the front line, who are so exhausted, I'm sure that they they can't think of anything but what's right in front of them. What if you, what if we sitting at home could begin to create the choice or create a dream or create the new world that we want when we leave our homes. So when we re-entering, we're re-entering with a vision. We're re-entering with more of a connection to our soul, more of a connection to the balance of life. So how could you know um, what will happen? We can't. We can't know what's going to happen. I mean, I think we have a basic idea of how life is and what will happen, but the structure and the belief and the foundation underneath it, well, maybe maybe we don't really know some of those subtleties. So what, what if what happens depended entirely upon what you do or what I do? It's a lot of responsibility, right? A lot of scary stuff. How could you even know where to start, never mind what to do? But let's say right now, in the next few weeks before we re-enter the world, we can make a plan. So what are our choices? What can we create? And what are we agreeing to that no longer works for us, that we can decide we're not going to agree to that anymore? So let's simplify these questions and worries by bringing on a new team member in a new way. You have an amazing expert right at your fingertips, and that expert is your soul. So I've talked to you a couple of times about the five languages of the soul. And the five languages go like this. First, the language is about reconnecting to an aware self, feeling your feelings and finding your inner voice and simply listening. Become your aware self. And the second aspect of this language is create a sacred space that is you, your spirit, your soul and source. And you integrate those those elements so that you can thrive from a whole different sort, a whole different place, a whole different source, a whole different thought process. And the third step, or the third language of the soul, is about meet and connect with your spiritual team and receive information from a higher source. This team helps with contracts, clearings, uh, contracts, clearing, soul level of vibrations, and you know more information that we normally have so the fourth one is fuel yourself with divine grace fill your car up with something other than what you've been used to filling it up the divine grace of the creator the source of energy and love and inspiration and the fifth 
um, language of the soul is to be aware of your unconscious inner team of protectors, inner childs, creators, and so much more. These are part of yourself that have been running your show. They are layers of yourself that um, may be helping you to develop your life's experience and it's not really working for you. So we're going to um, go on a break. When we come back, we're going to explore more of this languages of the soul and you can ex- access more information about your spiritual team and the Akashic Records in my book, Divine Love Affair and Akashic Journey. So we'll be returning in a few minutes to talk more about this. We are on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio and iHeart Radio. This is Angelscapes and I am your host, Nancy Smith. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations, Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Hey, welcome back. This is Nancy Smith um, with Angelscapes, and I'm on BBM Global Network and also TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. We are going to take calls starting around 830 might do some spot readings for you, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you. The call-in number is 866-451-1451. So terrific. So, um, so we talked about the five languages of the soul and accessing that language of the soul, accessing, um, you know, that subtle energy is first step. The first thing to access it is unwind your mind. To listen to your intuition, the voice of your soul takes um, a step into a kind of a calmness. I don't mean to say that you need to be calm to hear your soul, but you need to be quiet. You need to be in that observer state by allowing yourself to be exactly where you are in the moment and be willing to see yourself just as you are. It's that moment full of worry and nervous energy. Just stop and observe. Take a snapshot of where you are. And just love yourself. Kiss the worry on the nose, as, as I heard somebody say. I love that saying. And tell it, I got gotcha. you. You're okay. So you're putting that worry in there or that fear or whatever right in front of you. And you say, I got gotcha. you. You're okay because you've now stepped into your aware self. So then as you're unwinding yourself even further, take a breath and breathe out and a breath in. And as you breathe out, let your awareness open to the thoughts between the thoughts. Those small flashes of other thinking. And those flashes are your intuition, or those flashes are a pathway towards your intuition. So begin to observe those little flashes, like you're talking about, what am I going to have for dinner tonight? What am I going to um, put on the table? What what did we have? Oh, how much food is in the refrigerator? Oh, by the way, I forgot to do such and such, and I didn't like what she said. And then how about uh, blah, 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 and then you're back to, to thinking about dinner. It's those little in-between thoughts. And as you observe them, I want you to... S- See, what what are they saying to you? I want you to start to add them up and collect them. And then I want you, as you're aware of them, 
what is the emotional component to them? How do you feel when you have those thoughts? So, and sometimes flashes can be emotions and feelings that are that we're trying to bury them, but they keep coming back up. So we'll have a flash of maybe an anxiety. I'm going to cook dinner. I think I'm making chicken tonight. Oh my God, I'm so anxious. I can't, I can't even focus on this. I think I'll just make something simple like cereal. Um, and it's it's go back to that anxiety flash, and sit with with it for a minute because every feeling every emotion has a story that we tell ourselves in order to manage our feelings but emotions their energy in motion and i've mentioned this before they have messages for us contained in that energy in that emotion stories are usually critical minimizing your feelings and they do not resolve your feelings so stories are usually from our unconscious self that say don't go there don't feel that But what if you stopped the story and listened to the purity of how you're really feeling? So let me give you an example. Um, When we went into isolation, I had a constant feelings of anxiety and restlessness. I could not overcome that. And I paced and I went from task to task, but I didn't finish a darn thing. That went on for a couple of weeks. I can't believe I'm saying a couple of weeks. You would think it'd be a couple of days. My attention was short and I couldn't even watch TV. Seriously, could not sit down and watch TV. I had to do what I call... um, finally mining out my feelings my emotions to discover what they were really saying to me and uh, what they were telling me that I needed I had to stop and listen to myself so a a couple things came up for me as I mined my emotions Um, so when I went into isolation I had to take a look at that and my feelings at first were so complicated I, I just couldn't even sort them out I figured I had to live like this until this event was over I just couldn't feel how I could pull it apart and resolve things But then, as I pulled apart the emotions, I discovered that actually what I was feeling were old feelings. I felt abandoned, which is an old childhood thing, kind of like being left in a big department store and forgotten about. And um, I also felt that feeling of being forgotten about. And... um, that was, that was for me that's a scary feeling because I was isolating alone I, there was nobody around me in my place where I live another emotion I was feeling was of being trapped and I felt like I was trapped inside of my home because I had nobody I, I even wanted could I just have somebody to argue with please you know I mean that would take it that far as I recognized these feelings I asked myself I asked those feelings what are you telling me and what are you telling me that I need right now And very slowly, as I began to feel my feelings and listen to them, resolutions began to come to the surface. Um, As I reached out to students and clients and family through Internet apps, I realized that I could keep my life going, and I was comforted by that. And it... um, It wasn't the physical touch that I needed, but it was the connection that I craved. And I was able to make that connection. So my family and I started, which a lot of families are doing right now, Zoom nights. And it was hilarious. We all found something precious um, with each other in our stories and sharing recipes and um, talking gossip about each other or just being silly, uh, talking about our kids and... um, like we all told each other tips on how to zo- use Zoom and how not to use Zoom. And for me, the precious realization that I had in, re- in taking care of myself, really realizing that I needed to connect with other people, that I'm not the only one to have those feelings. And I have um, touched on something that was more global. And by responding to an inner need and creating something helpful for myself, I helped others. Because what, what I was feeling, I mean, lots of people love isolation. Some people are thriving in this, but, but it wasn't, I wasn't one of them. And um, as I got the courage to step out, I realized so many other people felt that way. I helped them. Our feelings and emotions, they can be universal. And when we listen and respond with awareness of ourselves, oftentimes we create something that is meaningful and helpful to somebody else. So I know that I'm telling you something you already know, but I want to say this one last thing. Self-compassion is self-love. And when we love ourselves, we now have the capacity to love and care for another. Do you get that? Do you hear what I'm saying? When you love yourself... You now have the capacity to truly love another person, to be in service to another person. We always have the ability to help another person, but the it's the capacity that we need to expand in order to follow through on truly loving somebody clearly because we're filled and we're able 
to support them as they feel themselves. We don't feel them, they feel themselves, but that's a whole other show. So um, another thing that I came, this is a very beautiful experience, very painful experience, is when my adult children and grandchildren went into isolation, I felt major anxiety and I ignored it. And I'm going to tell you that story when I come back because it, because something magnificent happened with this. So here's what some people are saying when they work with me as I do this work. I do myself, I do with other people. And they say they feel stronger in themselves about the decisions that they're making and their life becomes easier. So if you want to make a session with me, go to angelscapes.net or email me at nancy at angelscapes.net to request a free 15-minute consultation. We're going to go on break, and when we come back, we will discuss more of this amazing story of what I revealed when I felt my feelings. We are on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is Angelscapes, and I'm your host, Nancy Smith. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Master of words, powerful player. What life-changing words can Dr. Janet Smith Warfield pull out of her magical toolbox that just might mysteriously open a door you never knew was there? A door to free yourself from fear forever. Transform your rage into right action. Release your guilt. Position you into a life of freedom, purpose, passion, power, and peace. All quite suddenly, unexpectedly, and almost miraculously, with no effort on your part. Join Dr. Janet every Monday at noon Eastern on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on the BBM Global Network as she and her guests show you how words map our experiences, immersing you in a sound bath that relaxes your muscles, opens your mind, and supports you in co-creating your extraordinary life. And welcome back. We're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And this is Angelscapes, and I'm your host, Nancy Smith. And we've been discussing about how to unwind your mind and really get into your feelings and, and the messages that they have to tell you. Um, eventually, we're going to open up the lines for questions or quick in, one-card intuitive reading. So that number would be 866-451-1451. So here's the thing. So I went into... Um, Isolation alone, as I said, but um, when my adult children and grandchildren went into isolation and I, I could not see them or talk to them anymore, um, I could talk to them certainly online, but there's a, you know, there's a whole different dynamics. I felt major anxiety. I ignored it and I overrode it in a multitude of pep talks that I told myself and I, I became so self-critical of myself for not, you know, because I didn't want to feel this anxiety that I knew, I knew that something important was buried under the surface of, of of, you know, the, self, the more self-critical I get, the more I realize there's something I'm burying. So that's a little clue for all of you because I don't think I'm that different than anybody else. So I stopped and I listened to my restlessness and I listened to my anxiety. And as I listened to my self-talk, as I listened to this and I watched this um, emotion unfurl, I found great despair underneath all of this um, self-talk. And I said, what the heck is this self-despair about? And that wasn't the question to say, what the heck is this? Stop it. Well, what are you about? Who are you? What's going on here? And I um, took the time to hear myself without criticizing myself. And a part of me, I found, was repeatedly asking, when will I see them again? Will I ever see them again, my children and my grandchildren? And all the logic and the tea in China could not address this question, could not answer this question. And... Um, 
the only place I could go was to admit how I was actually feeling and how my emotions were flowing through me. And I tapped into, as I did that, I tapped into an ancient feeling and energy of motherhood and a mother's love. It's like a club I joined a long time ago when I had kids, and I kind of forgot I was part of that club. Um, and uh, as I did that, I felt a connection to something so old and so amazing that I just felt like I wasn't alone. And I asked the Sacred Mother Spirit to help me. I said, help me with this this huge, huge anxiety. And I, as I, you know, I didn't do this once. I had to sit with this several times. And as I began to have the inner conversation with the Sacred Mother, this lovely, powerful spirit opened her arms and her wisdom to me with this messages. Here's what she said. This will pass. I am with you and we will do this together. And in those very simple words, I felt comforted, I felt calm, and I felt strong. I can do this, and I can do this, and I can do this. And I want to give that, guys, to you. Um, This is the pathway to finding that power of you're not alone. So if I hadn't spent that time to honestly hear myself, to honestly sit with feeling how I was feeling, I would not have been able to make that lovely connection to the Sacred Mother, who even now as I talk to you is still holding me and comforting me. So um, I'm telling you, that's the miracle. Because underneath those feelings is our connection to our intuition, and it's a connection to the flow of life force energy, which is a connection to the soul and source and all of those higher beings that are willing to help us and be with us. We don't have to make our minds up to make it happen. We simply need to be present within ourselves to love ourselves, and then our capacity grows not only to help another person, but to receive this powerful love that's around us from Spirit. So I want to kind of take you through an exercise. Um, I want you to try this. I do this all the time when I feel a little bit stuck or those inner critical voices are just not letting me know my own self. I follow my daydreams. I pick a thought randomly out of your brain. I pick it out of my brain. You pick yours out of your brain and follow it out. Embellish it if you want. Just add to it. It's like if I have that, if I have purple socks there, I may as well put in red shoes. Just keep putting it in. Embellish it as you want. And ask the daydream where it wants to go. And give your daydream the freedom to express whatever it wants to. Observe the thoughts. And those thoughts will eventually take you to a specific place. So it's as opposed to creating the thoughts and making them happen, observe them and allow them to flow. You could be ended up thinking about the apocalypse. You could end up thinking about a marvelous vacation on the beach, or you could end up thinking that chicken dinner might work after all. You could be connecting to something you, someone or something that you are missing. Just let it go there. So whatever this daydream takes you wherever and however you feel, Ask yourself, is this where I want to go? Is this who I am? Is this where I want to be? And pay attention to your physical reactions, your body language. They'll tell you everything. So as this daydream unfolds, if you're twitchy and your stomach hurts, this may not be the nurturing place for you or the nurturing thought for you to work with. And ask your daydream to show you another option. Because as you ask your daydream, which is your intuition, and your maybe sometimes it's your higher self trying to get through to you, um, ask for another option. And it's uh, another fantasy or something that will actually nourish you and then see what replaces the anxiety thought and go to the place that nourishes you and when you get to that place that nourishes you you're at the beach whatever you are what is here that speaks to me what is here that nourishes me what is here that is so important and how can I bring this energy this thought this feeling into my daily life you'll get the answers dreams and daydreams can tell us a lot about ourselves And just for today, I want you to observe your thoughts and let them become daydreams so that you can discover the guidance that's within them, right? So just let yourself flow with that. So the next, when we come back, I'm going to talk about um, the next soul connection, the next soul language, which is creating sacred space that is you. We've talked about this before, but I'm just going to kind of remind you a little bit about that. So um, we're going to go on a break. 
And when we come back, we're going to, we'll be taking, um, what time is it now? Yeah, we're going to start taking calls. The number is 866-451-1451. And we're going to, um, I'm, this, so we're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is Angelscapes, and I'm your host, Nancy Smith. And you can also look on angelscapes.net and see what's going on there. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and to Tune in radio. Welcome back. We're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And this is Angelscapes, and I'm your host, Nancy Smith. So we have somebody on the line, um, Randy, and we're having a lovely conversation. And what I want to do, I want to bring her in and do um, some reading with her. But before I do that, what I want to talk to you guys about, because when I read for somebody, I'm telling you it's for everybody. Um, so I want you all to listen. So we're going to create sacred space a little bit here with your spirit your soul and your source so you can um integrate with them and thrive you can hear what i'm saying um it's a it's a very short meditation I'm not going to really take you through much it's on my website but building a sacred space with your conscious aware self will help you answer a lot of things that it's like wordless so i just want you to put your hand on your heart and just ask your spirit to come forward breathe right into your heart Feel your spirit. And as you breathe into your spirit, as you breathe out, let it expand all the way around you. Gorgeous. It's a big bubble around you. And then ask Mother Earth's healing, nurturing love to come up from the earth and surround you as well and blend in with your spirit. And then I love to talk to Father, Son, that golden white light. Just invite him, that energy. It's a masculine energy that... It resides in the sun. It's a sun. And just breathe it into your space for comfort. But this is creative expansiveness, which as you're being nurtured and healed in your, in your spirit and your body and mind, you're also not staying there. You're, you're expanding into something new. And then as you do that and you feel that expanded state, I want you to imagine there's a doorway in front of you. This is a doorway to heaven. This is the doorway to source, infinite intelligence, love, and light. As you open that doorway, just invite in that divine, unconditional love to come around, to fill you and expand all the way around you. So everything that we say in here, everything that we do in this sacred space is now um, face-to-face with the highest vibration possible in your life. And whatever comes up against a higher vibration can't help but to start to vibrate at a higher rate itself because vibration wants to match itself. So as we bring grief into these sacred spaces, as we bring our questions into these sacred spaces as our frustration, or we just want some, some inspiration, let the expansion happen with your breath. So as Randy, as um, we created the sacred space, and I just wanted, you were saying, you're such a talented creative writer, 
and you're um, sort of saying to me that you're still deep in grief. Talk to me a little bit about that. Well, it's been, as, as I told you, 121 days. I'm still counting since my husband passed away of lung cancer, which was only diagnosed like five days before he passed away after he'd been in the hospital for almost 30 days. And, of course, now I'm confined to my house with my 140-pound St. Bernard, and I adore her. But without the human contact and in this house with all my memories of my husband, I'm really, it's really devastating to me. And for, you know, there's few weeks that I was able to get out with friends. I was starting to heal a little bit. But now that I can't have any human contact, like you were saying earlier, it's just, um, it's overwhelming me. And I cry a lot. I mean, I, for no reason, I'll just sit here and burst into tears. Yeah, and I don't like yeah. being that way because I'm such, I'm a really strong person. But the death of my husband has just overwhelmed me to the point that yeah. I'm not dealing with things well. And I just need help. And I know it yeah. intellectually. I know what I'm doing. But emotionally, I just, I'm not handling well, anything where I can't concentrate, can't do anything. Right. I but nor should anything. you. You're totally right. I know you're counting the days, 120 days, and where's my progress here? And I just feel like you're right exactly where you need to be. I mean, there are people who haven't gone through what you're going through and are having the same issues that you are, only yours is so deep with grief. And I really am concerned about the isolation that you feel because sometimes people in their grief want to be isolated, but sometimes we need um, we do need that human touch. So. I want to take you through um, something, and I, if you feel like you can do it, if you don't feel like you can do it, just, you know, don't. So let me know. But that feeling that I talked about earlier, where I sat with that um, feeling of anxiety, missing my kids, and then when I took the layer off, there was that despair. Yes. Now. No, we don't want to let that despair overcome us. We don't let the, want to let the story tell us that this is the end of things. No, we're just feeling our feelings of human beings. This isn't the end of things for you. But as you very gently feel how you feel with the sadness, don't tell the story anymore. Don't tell yourself, I shouldn't be feeling this. I shouldn't be crying. But instead, I want you to still your mind. And I want you to allow yourself to feel that which you miss, to feel that which you desire, which, you're, which is your husband's spirit. And as I work with a medi- as a medium, I work to feel the spirit of that, the person that left. And I just breathe in and breathe out. And I can't think. As soon as I think, the mediumship connection is gone. So I want you to just feel just how you feel and be quiet and allow spirit to come towards you to comfort you. And to bring you to that place, just like I heard the Sacred Mother talking to me, maybe the, maybe your husband will talk to you, or maybe a guide will talk to you, whatever's safest for your psyche to hear will talk to you and comfort you and take you to another place, another place. Grief work is so, so important to do. Um, and this part of this grief work is accepting that you're in grief and that there is a process to move through and uh, just as you breathe now breathe in and breathe out because Bill is his name right I feel Bill yes yeah yeah and I was with you there when he was so sick and he said go yes. we met we met at the um the that huge event and you were so worried and you thought it was pneumonia and um I have to say I had a long talk with Bill <laughs> when you were saying and I said Bill you got to stay there. you got to stay for a little bit longer. She needs to be with you. And he said, I know. And I have to say, he was so aware of you, even though he was so sick. And I feel that he is so aware of you, even right now. Um, I feel like, um, it's funny, I can feel your dogs. I get, I get like an itch in my eye. I'm allergic to dogs. Okay, the dog is right there. And I feel like sometimes he expresses himself through the dog. Um, like you'll feel the dog just snuggle up against you or you'll feel the dogs yeah. pointing to the door. It's like, get up. Come on, Randy. Get up. Get up. Get up. And let Bill talk to you through the dog. I don't. What's the dog's name again? I don't know. Tell me your dog's name again. Savannah. And she Savannah. does do that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So in that sense... Thank God you're with Savannah. Touch her, love her, and just when you feel that feeling, don't criticize yourself for it. Just feel it and be with Savannah. And just, it's like ride it out with the waves. This is a um, kind of like Ace of Swords, like your beginning. This is the beginning of new thoughts. And new thoughts, not necessarily to change your feelings, but to support yourself 
in the process that you're going through. So your thoughts are, are opposing your feelings right now. And we want to have your thoughts support and nurture your feelings so that they can move forward. You can manage the storm. You can get through all the waves and the rain and the thunder and lightning. You can do it. You have a beautiful, beautiful vehicle. And Bill is right there with you through Savannah and just even through your calmness. If Feel the feelings. Don't think the story. And just let spirit go closer to you. This is a vehicle that will help you be strong as you move through. Now, I'm not saying there won't be tears, but there will be. Um, But I want you to kind of consider not creating a story that's going to put you into a box and tell you this is who you are and this is what you're doing and this is what you should be doing. I want the box to drop and I want you to be with spirit. So immediately, if you could recognize when you are opposing your own feelings, you drop the box and let yourself have the feelings. The feelings will move. Remember, their energy and motion, they will move. So you, so if you start at 12, by 12 and feeling your feelings, by 12.10, you will be in a new spot. I can't tell you where it is. I wasn't expecting the Sacred Mother to talk to me. But I, when I was um, with... Um, you know, my despair over missing my kids, but the strength, the strength from her presence that came through, it wasn't mine. And I knew that I was with the sacred mother and that's what your feelings and staying in that space will give to you. This is, you'll start to see this isolation piece as, as a gift, as opposed to uh, the worst thing ever in the whole world. Do you see what I'm saying? You're you're being given. Yes. Yeah, and Randy, I'm not that far away. Girl, call me. We'll 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 talk through some of this stuff, or we'll I'll just sit with you. Okay. You know, through your feelings. Okay. I want to give you, you a know, ton of love. Savannah and Savannah and Bill were very close, so that makes sense that he would come through her. Right. Good. Wonderful. Yes. Oh, good. So I hope this was helpful, and don't be a stranger. We'll talk soon. All right. Thank you, dear. Appreciate it. Thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. You're welcome. So we're going to go on a break now. You're listening to Angelscapes with Nancy um, on BBM Global Network, also on TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. You can listen to the recordings of this program um, and uh, earlier shows on BoldBraveMedia.com shows Angelscapes. You can listen to it on iHeart Podcasts. They're all up there, too. And uh, I want to ask you to... Think about joining my Facebook group, Soul Power Living, Tools to Create a Life You Want and Love. Go on Facebook, look up Soul Power Living, and uh, ask to join. There's a lot of resources there, and I'd I'd love to get to know you. So I'll be back in a couple minutes. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it mike zorick a three-time california state champion in greco roman wrestling at 114 pounds mike blind since birth was born in hartford connecticut he was a six-time national placer including two seconds two-thirds and two-fourths he also won the veterans folk style wrestling twice at 152 pounds in all these tournaments he was the only blind competitor Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. 
Welcome back. We're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and this is Angelscapes, and I'm your host, Nancy Smith. We've been discussing um, talking to your soul. Your soul is a source of wisdom for you as you get through, you know, these hard times. We had a beautiful call from Randy really discussing what um, her experience is now. Um, so what I wanted to talk to you about is intuition really quickly, and I have another caller. I'm going to invite her in. But how do you know that what you're feeling and your intuition is from your soul and your spirit, or am I using the common sense that I picked up from the pool of the minds and the beliefs and fears of all the community around me, and I'm just agreeing with them? So how do we know this? So identify the source that you are accessing when you are sorting out the truth of things for yourself. So untuition, I call it, untuition is loud, it's fearful, it's controlling, it demands Um, things from you it demands that you feel a certain way and it drives you to do things it drives you to plan it drives you to judge yourself to blame or shame no matter what it's highly critical Uh, this is our unconscious self that keeps us trucking through life in our ordinary normal way so our intuition's not really serving us right now and it's kind of in a closed loop our intuition is in spirit Intuition is that quiet voice within that takes us out of the ordinary into the extraordinary. This is what we want in this time. We want to be taken into the extraordinary because the same old, same old just isn't working. Um, so the three consciousness of self is unconscious consciousness. Uh, and if you are in charge, being aware of yourself or your higher consciousness of yourself, your soul. But wait, there's a fourth consciousness, a super consciousness that is the one mind. And this is where I want your souls to take you. Because in this one mind is the source of healing. It's the source of awareness. It's the source of let's get her done differently. So, um so, Barbara, welcome. Do you have a question or something we want to kind of talk about based on your where you are? You have some amazing things happening. <laughs> yeah, I just found out I have another grandchild on the way. I don't know the gender yet, but I'm thrilled because like, that was my stepson and his wife, and they were having difficulties getting there. So it was, it's great to yeah, have them. It's um, wonderful. So. Yeah, I, I'm always looking to try to improve my tuition. I don't always know how, but um, I guess I, meditation always seems to help me. And then learning to trust my gut. I get feelings in my gut, literally in my belly. Yep. When something's good or bad. Is that a, a way to absolutely to trust your tuition? Or? Absolutely. And that feeling, how do you get your information, is really so important to be aware of. You, your belly, that's clear sentient, clear feeling. When um, uh-huh. That's one of the most powerful ways as a medium for me to get information because I can feel the spirit. I can feel them, their personality, maybe the pain that they had before they passed. I could get so much information through feeling. So trusting your feelings in your gut. So now that you know that you're getting information from your gut, what I want you to do is ask it questions. I want you to begin to yeah. relate to it and and relate to it but give and take give and take so if you're feeling this way what does that mean what is it that you're telling me clear cognizance which is clear knowing people don't understand that they think that psychics are all clairvoyant we see things and we hear things but no we feel things and then through those feelings we know things so as you're deliberately Mm -hmm. communicating to that gut feeling you're keeping your mind quiet you're not trying to figure out the feeling but you're letting the wisdom rise up from the feeling to tell you what's going on here now as you do that especially with your gut you're talking about you know underneath your belly button that gut kind of place um um mine mine's just above it okay so that's your solar plexus yeah that's your solar plexus and archangel michael Uh is there in spades so getting in the solar plexus (laughs) usually feeling is um Okay, so how is how is this working with my identity? What am I reacting to? What am I um, aligning with myself energetically? So as you feel those feelings, they don't necessarily have to be warnings, but they could be a, a radio station you tuned into, or it could be, hey, pay up, pay, uh, listen up here. Um, So as you listen up to, um, I feel like I want you to practice on small things so that you can get a feel, you know, get you get some expertise with this. So picking up, what am I going to have for lunch today? Pick up one thing, pick up another thing, feel in your gut, which feels better to me. See what I'm saying? So you're starting to um, practice, practice. Um, So as you practice, um, 
Mm-hmm. Then as times of stress come forward towards you, you've already got that relationship established. So you'll get that gut in your feeling that says, not there, not today, no how. Or I'm thinking about, um, say you're thinking about your stepson, and you're thinking about him, thinking about him, going, ooh, I, I just really want to talk to him. Say it was yesterday. I just want to talk to him. Oh, I, I've been yeah. thinking about him, thinking about him. And what is the feeling that I have towards him? Oh, this feels like a good feeling. Oh, this could. And you want to ask. You want to ask. And so by the time you talk to him, you know he's got some good news for you. And um, there. Uh-huh. So, so you see what I'm saying? Because you get the feeling. You go, oh, oh, word, I got a feeling. Yeah. Well, no, you, it could be. You know, it could be anything. So, um, yeah. it's okay. It's okay to lose your footing. It's okay to lose your sense of decision and logic in this feel it and let it talk to you means that you're not in charge anymore and that can be very very uncomfortable but now you're engaged now you're cooking with gas you know see what what i'm saying so we're gonna um take a little break here i want to keep talking to you about this but um so we're gonna um move forward um but i want to say what um what my clients tell me about this work that i do with them is I am more present in the moment, as one of my students once told me, and I know I'm not alone. I no longer feel so isolated in my life. And they work with me, and I help them to teach, talk to their souls, teach them how to get to that soul language. So you can go to angelscapes.net to book a session, or you can uh, email me at Nancy at Angelscapes to request a free 15-minute consultation. And please, please join my Facebook group, Soul Power Living, Tools to Create a Life You Want and Love. We're going to go on break, and when we come back, um, we'll still be taking calls. I think Barbara and I will finish up our conversation about the superpowers that you have within yourself to see what's around you. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with accompanying empowerment cards. She is a Spirit Book of the Year Gold Medal Living Now Book Award winner. And her book is a number one Amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the Living Now Spirit Book of the Year. An inspirational speaker, MJ will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life. Your life did not just happen to you. You chose it, which means you can change it. Visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the Word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in Theology and an Honorary Doctorate of Divinity and Christian Counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. And welcome back. We're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is Angelscapes, and I'm your host, Nancy Smith. So we've been discussing intuition and your superpowers of how you can interact with your intuition. And Barbara had a question. Barbara, what is your question? Yeah, uh, so besides just the feeling in my gut, I've been using uh, a pendulum a lot lately, and I want to understand, because I seem to have good luck with that, so I'm trying to understand how that into my intuition if I can use sure it. so let me describe for you who don't know what a pendulum is it's basically a string or a chain or something long with a weight underneath it some people will look um, will use it to um, plumb something up in um, carpentry or something like that but it's basically a heavy weight on a chain it doesn't have to be any um, beautiful metal it doesn't have to be anything specific it just needs to be able to hang straight down so what happens with the pendulum as you set intentions and you blend with spirit you ask your angels to come and help you and you ask your fear to step aside and then you use the pendulum and you let it swing and you allow it to swing um 
it's any way it wants to. And then you ask the pendulum, please work with me. And you ask the angels to please work. Actually, it's not the pendulum working with you. It's your higher guidance working with you and whoever you have um, assigned. So um, once the pendulum starts moving, I want you to ask, show me what no looks like. And then allow the pendulum to make a certain sweep. Could be a circle, could be back and forth, whatever it is. And then stop it and then say, show me a yes. Pendulums are basically yes and no tools, just for the sake of simplicity. And then as they show me, show me a yes and just let the pendulum um, swing for you. And I like to make a circle and I put... Um, mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual. And then I just want to see where I am in each one of those boxes. It's like I'm taking my temperature, as it were. Where do I need work? Where do I need balance? How am I doing in these different aspects of myself? So once you get you're good, you're not good, then you go into the place where you're good and what do you need to support yourself to stay good? You're not good. What do you need to, to balance yourself? So you're asking your guides to give you clear information. Another way of I combined oracle cards with pendulums, I'm not good. Let's pick an oracle card. What are you telling me about that? And Then you have information that you can blend with and feel um, – Feel your sense, feel your, um, <clears throat> so you're feeling the yes or no, the card comes in, the information, where do you feel that information in your body, physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual, what does it say to you, and then start to have an, an energetic exchange of what is spirit trying to tell you about this aspect in your life. It's a beautiful way to take your temperature, as it were, and I really, really recommend it. There's so many things we could talk about, about using your superpowers at this time, so I could do a whole other show with this. So we're going to um, sign off pretty soon. We're, uh, the show's um, recorded, and you can find the archives on uh, HTTP boldbravemedia.com under Angelscapes or under Tuesday Night, Channel 100, or you can find uh, Angelscapes in the podcast list on iHeartRadio. So you could read more about me, Angelscapes, and Nancy Smith at angelscapes.net. Reach out to me on Facebook, um, Nancy of Angelscapes, Nancy Smith. Join my Facebook group, Soul Power Living, Tools to Create a Life You Want and Love. And if you're interested in booking a reading, go on angelscapes.net. People find these readings powerful and transformative, and that's how I work with my readings, to find readings to find your soul's energy and what it has to say to you. So um, Nancy at angelscapes.net for a free 15-minute consult if you want more information about what I do with you. So for now, I bid you discover your soul, find your power, and live a joyful and fulfilled life. This has been Angelscapes with host Nancy Smith. Tune in each week as Nancy discusses ideas, tips, and lessons to help you open to receive divine love, joy, and soul power in your life. You can discover the powerful being you really are right here on Nancy Smith's Angelscapes. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.